Good morning, folks. Welcome to another Asian robot build video and today I am finally covering the easy builds that you guys have been waiting for. So to start with, I'm actually going to show you the easy war pipe build. Okay, I know this is one that y'all have been waiting for and you might be thinking, why didn't you start with chain blades first? Um, I'm not going to go in the same order as the end game builds because number one, I need my chain blades for the heroic escalation coming up on Thursday. And the other thing is that I need my other builds for other stuff. Okay, because I promised to help people farm Cornivore on Friday. So I can't do repeaters yet. Those two will be pushed back to the end. But um, anyway, here we go. Starting out with the Hellion Warpike. Okay, now this build is, is one of the builds that people have been waiting for for ages. And I know they will absolutely love this one. Check it out. Inferno's Arrow with a Rage Cell and an Overpower Cell. You've got your special being Concussive Payload. You've got your Munitions Amplifier right here. All right. And that basically settles it, okay? There's no legendary ability. Now, for easy builds, or also known as newbie builds, don't be fooled by the fact... Now, this is a question I'm going to answer before carrying on. People always think, oh, newbie build, I don't need this because I'm not new to the game. No, you are new to the game if you're not a top 100 player. Anybody who's not a top 100 player, I count as a new player. If you haven't gotten into the top 100 list before, you are a new player. And this can help you. Don't discount these easy builds because if you haven't completed an end game build yet, these will help you farm. Don't underestimate them, and I'm gonna prove that to you, okay? Watch. You've got your Iceborne Omni Cell right here. You've got Skarn's Defiance as your Lantern, Zeal Cell. Now, you might be thinking, wait, hold up. Your endgame build has Molten. Why are you using Zeal here? I'll explain it. Chasing Molten Cells, very difficult for a lot of newbies. Okay, understanding the Behemoth attack pattern at the same time chasing your Molten Cells, not easy. That's why I put that as an endgame tactic. Here, I want to focus on the simplicity of the build as well as how easy it is for you to overpower your opponents, which is why zeal is the key. Number one, it'll boost the amount of shields you get and also deal more damage with the lantern. And do you know how much the bonus is? The bonus, I mean, I'll go through the perks later, but the bonus is 65%. That's a lot. Nasher cap with the toughness cell, very easy to obtain. Okay, my alarm is going off again. Go away, I'm already awake. Scrave wing jacket with an adrenaline cell, okay. You've got your Volcanic Grips from the Charog with a Zeal Cell. And you've got your Nasher Treads with a Tenacious Cell. Now, I'm going to explain this build in detail now by going through the perks. All right, so feel me on this. You've got Adrenaline, giving you more damage every time you consume 10 stamina. Okay, that's up to 33%. All right. Overpower, when the Behemoth is staggered, you do 40% more damage. Rage, you take any damage for 15 seconds, you're gonna deal 20% more. Tenacious, with this build, you have 1,700 hit points. That is 34% bonus damage at full health. Toughness increases the healing you get from Iceborne. And Zeal, last but not least, is very good for upping your lantern effectiveness and keeping you alive. Now, the key thing to this whole build is the fact that it doesn't require any trial cells. It doesn't require any legendary armor. You can build this right off the bat, empower it, and you'll be very powerful and able to farm endgame content. Okay? Let me prove it to you. For those of you that don't want to see the combat showcase, I highly encourage it. But if you don't want to see the combat showcase, like, share, and subscribe right now. If you want to keep my channel running, you want to keep me in business, please consider getting a channel membership. Okay? It's very cheap. You can also send super thanks on YouTube or drop a tip by the link in the description of the video. All right. All of this helps to keep the channel running. If I don't get enough, I cannot run the channel. Okay. Now for this type of build. Okay. Unlike the other tests, you're not going to go to an excessively high level. For a easier build, I highly recommend only defeating behemoths that are three, four levels higher. All right, so Thunderwatch would actually be the appropriate area to demonstrate how well this works. However, for the sake of the showcase, just to show you that it can handle harder content, we're gonna go to Fortune's Folly, where the lowest creature is lo uh, three levels higher, the highest creature is six levels higher, okay? This is to demonstrate that this build has the viability you need to survive and devastate behemoths in all these situations. As always, we are not going to cut out any loading screens so you know that there's no transitions, no editing, no hacks used behind the scenes. Our, you know, we, we are very honest content creators here, you know, unlike the vast majority who will say, OP build, actually stolen from Asian robot. Or they'll say something like, oh, this build is so great. And then it uses Catalyst and requires you to take tonics like a drug addict. While if you have enough RAMs to do that and enough farming equipment whatever you want to do that please by all means you can just change zeal to catalyst in this build and you'll be fine but i'm not showing that because for a lot of people that's not sustainable all right and you don't want that 
you want to be able to run freely and play whatever the fuck you want in the game, not worry about, I need rams today. Man, I need some tonics today. Man, I should go farm some mushrooms today. Man, I should act like a drug addict today. You don't want that, do you? All right, and also to the absolute assholes who steal my builds and try to pass them off as your own, um, just so you know, you can never imitate Asian robot quality. I mean, you can try, but the reason why you have a low subscriber count is because people literally know that you're stealing my builds and don't do that. It's really disrespectful. Okay, so we got a Pangar right off the bat. I don't know what the fuck level it is. Oh, level 11. Okay, so that's about five levels higher. Um, I'm gonna start off just by swinging. Now with this build, you don't have to think too hard. Why? All you need to do is swing. All right, it's a very simple build to play. Don't even have to worry about wounding. Swing. Just swing, okay? If you want to wound, you can. Keep in mind, if you want to wound, all right? If you don't want to wound, you do not have to. Keep that in mind. The usual way that I would play this build is I would focus on knocking down the behemoth first, take advantage of overpower, and then wound apart. So now that your overpower is triggered, you're getting extra damage, right? Grand job. You can use that now to, to get a wound. Like that, like so. Now, this creature is really suffering, and uh, I can't get the upper leg, so forget it. There, now you've got the wound, and my mom invaded my room while I'm filming. Hi, mom! Thanks, mom. But why are you invading me when I'm filming? <laughs> Bye, mom! Love you! My mom is super nice. Okay, so there you go. The Pangar is dead. Um, as you can see, I wasn't even really paying attention during the fight, but again, it's... The, the build just works. You literally don't have to think hard. I have never once had to think hard, and I make these builds so that you don't have to think hard, because why? I am fucking lazy. Also, who's this person? I, I don't know who you are. I'm sorry. Please do not add me if, if I don't give you permission to add me, because I don't know who you are. And if too many randos add me, I get all sorts of weird DMs during filming, and that gets wonky. So, I know most people know this rule, but I just have to, you know, restate it sometimes. Now, if you want to, you take advantage of your Iceborne, right? You can trigger Rage and then your Stagger Immunity through Iceborne and get a lot of free hits. Now, this is something I like to do to sort of, like, uh, cheese it to the overpower the Behemoth, especially when the Behemoth's over my level. I want to overpower it as soon as possible, so this is the method that I use. Um, it's very useful, and besides, you've got Rage, so what are you worried about, right? You're not, it's not like you're running Predator. And as soon as you get that overpower, go ham with the wounding. You know, get that wound so you get even more damage and attack speed. Once you've got that wound, you know, you've got the Aether Rush, you've got the Aether Rush buff to dish out even more damage. And because you're not using anything end game like Executioner Spearhead, you're not worried about getting another wound to maintain your bonus. No, all you're gonna do is just hit the creature until your next overpower triggers and then get another wound. That's all you have to do. And if the creature is overpowered and down, you can actually start shooting bullets at it. If you have a specific part you want to break, you can start shooting bullets at it. As you can see, in about three minutes, we've just completely taken out two creatures, and that is with me giving explanations. Okay, let me show you what happens when the creature is only three levels higher. I mean, and, and in this case, you have elemental advantage. I should probably do this test on the Cabarac, but this will be a lot faster to show you. So... Okay, it knocks me down, right? So I've triggered my Rage bonus. Here we go. Where possible, try to go for the head. If you can dodge, of course dodge. If you can't, it doesn't matter. Take some damage, okay? doesn't matter. You're not going to take anything serious. Go for the head as much as you can, just so that you can get the... Remember, the head has double the uh, stagger damage. Knock it down, okay? As I mentioned. Now, your Hellion has very, very useful... Uh, ultimate effect which is to basically deal extra damage every eight hits that is super useful and now you can take full advantage of the uh aether rush bonus and and the overpowering and uh basically just go hand see that then the creature is already dead and you still get 200 200 xp for a creature three levels higher do you see how effective that is so there you go that is how to play the easy warpike build thank you so much for enjoying this video if you like it don't, and you like my content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's the most important. If you want to support the channel and you want to keep it going, drop a tip via the link in the description of the video. Consider becoming a channel member or send a super thanks on YouTube. All of that helps to keep the channel running and I appreciate it tremendously. Okay? 
Let me shift over to the thank you scene. Thank you to October's top supporters, Bravo7910, CranPD, Johnny Nara, FNXKiller43, Zavi Uzumaki, AlienFrost80, Kazmanta, my lovely girl, Yuki no Kami, JMoney13, Ravik, Starbuzz, and Rogue Assassin. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much for supporting my channel, and I'll see you all on the next one.